While visiting my colleague in London and seeing her scrumptious work, I grabbed my camera, with her permission of course, and filmed the sfogliatelle in the making. So without further ado, let's see what we can do out of four ingredients. So let's start with the dough. Sugar, salt and strong flour is being scaled and put into the mixing bowl. We leave the water aside for now. This type of dough doesn't require to be mixed as for example brioche when we reach silky and stretchy texture. Here we are mixing all the dry ingredients and then slowly adding water. Once it's done, and done means when the whole scaled water is incorporated and we see a crumbly texture, we go back to the table where it's going to be divided into even parts. These containers serve very well as they help to hold the shape in spite of the fact that May is pressing the dough, but with not that much force. We will give it to rest for at least 30 minutes. During this time gluten strands will relax and let's say this block will glue together. Very quick one guys, while we wait I wanna share something with you. The majority of my viewers actually watch my videos without subscribing to my channel. I know it's a very little thing but it's a huge favor, it helps more than you think. To return the favor I promise to deliver the best content I have the most stories from the kitchen so we can all learn together. Thank you so much. Gracias. Gracias mille. Achio. And now let's go back to the video. Once the dough has relaxed, May will handle it with a lot of care. It seems almost like the process of making the sfogliatelle is kind of therapeutic as it cannot be rushed and has to be done with a lot of care. Here in this part I won't rush so we can follow how the dough turns into a more elastic sheet. The dough still seems a bit rough and it's just holding together. That's why May is working carefully and if any crumbs fall apart, she's gluing them back together. Have a look how the dough is getting stretcher and stretcher after every turn. When it comes to the number of passes, all I can say is that at least here there's no exact number of turns. It depends on how the dough feels. What we're looking for is a smooth texture. It is incredible to see how a ball of crumble turns into a smooth stretchy dough. The dough is folded into single folds all the way till the end. It seems like the texture is right, so May is giving it a last turn. After that the dough will be immediately placed into the container and we will leave it to rest before sheeting it down to almost a paper thickness. Rest period is super important as it makes it easier to shape, roll and fold the dough properly because the dough becomes less elastic and more extensive. After the resting, which is minimum half an hour, we will roll the dough for the last time. Before that, we need to make the lard ready. We put it on the stove so it can melt gently. Lard will help to separate the layers while we roll the whole sheet into a log. Anyway, you will see this in a minute. So we score the sides to help the dough relax while it passes through the sheeter and also give it a light touch of flour. Now, slowly sheeting down the dough. Here you cannot rush as well as what sometimes happens that the machine eats up the dough, so you need to be careful. You may need to practice doing this multiple times times to get a feel for the dough and feel confident in its thickness. However, just like a muscle, if you don't use and train your skill, you may forget or lose it. So practicing is the most important thing. That's why sometimes it looks very easy, but it's only because the person invested hours and hours into it. So yes, that's the biggest secret of it. 
after several passes the thickness seems right so we take a rolling pin and roll finally today we can move on to the final step so we will finish the prep work Tomorrow we will only do shaping and baking. Talking about the thickness for the last time, we don't want to go down as much as the filo pastry thickness. Make cuts the pointy end of the sheet and starts with the even straight and a quite tight rolling. Even though the entire sheet is not perfectly even and the ends are slightly narrower, it is easy to adjust by stretching the dough. This dough at this point is very pliable, so when May needs to stretch the sheet, it's easily handled and doesn't break. The same as we did all the passes using lamination machine, here we will also take time to roll evenly and tightly. I better leave you to watch closely for a bit. Once the log is done, sealed and cling film, it goes to rest in the fridge, ideally overnight. The moment that we have been waiting for. Let's have a look how does the whole effort of hours and work reflect in the layers. Beautiful! Each slice weighs around 55 grams. Now, when it comes to shaping, May grabs a bowl with the lard and use some just to moist the surface, so it's easier to kind of make a shape of the lobster tail. Once that's done, she's filling it with the semolina orange filling. Gently sealing the pastry and that is it, they will be baked for 25 minutes at 195 degrees Celsius. Before we finish the video, I had to come back for one last time. I have known me as the queen of pastel de nata. And now, after this time, I had to rename her title and crown her as Sfogliatelle Queen. I know she knows it already, I just wanted to say big, big thanks. And in general, it feels so good to come back to London and to reconnect with my fellow bakers. Sharing is caring. Let's spread ideas, knowledge and tips with each other. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.